Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to talk about CPU coolers, air, water. Which one do I want? Which one do I need? I don't know. Stay around, stick tuned, we're going to talk about it. Okay, cool. So check it, check it, check it. Irrit, 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 check. So I have a whole variety of CPU coolers right here, as you guys can see. From water cooled to air cooled to standard cool. Okay. Well, I need to address the subject about coolers. So my idea and my thoughts behind it is. What are you going to do with the computer? Is the computer going to be in a hot environment, like a garage, a warehouse, like in a basement, somewhere, or an attic, somewhere it's going to be hot? Then you might want to go with a water cooler like this one, the H100i Pro. That is an all sealed up unit. It has, like, what do you call it? Fluid? It has fluid that runs through it and it's a sealed unit. It has a water pump and it has radiators and it still uses fans to dissipate the heat. All right, if you're going to be running it like in your bedroom or you know in your house, somewhere in your office, somewhere like that where it's air conditioned and cool, then you can probably get away with running a CPU air cooler, a fan. Fans are the best way. They are the easiest of maintenance. They are the easiest to install. And when they fail, you know that they fail because the fan won't come on or the fan doesn't spin. If your water pump and your sealed unit right here, if that fails, you don't know it until the computer either overheats or unless you have, you know, maybe like a, like a, a sensor or some kind of readout something that will tell you that hey you know the, the water pump in your AIO is not working no more hello What's this damn elevator going forgot my CPU cooler You know, AIOs used to be kind of boring. They used to be one color, and then the only type of addressable color to them would be the fans. Well, now they got them to where the water blocks are coming out with colors. They're putting OLED screens in the pumps, and they're doing all this wacky and crazy stuff with them. But uh, mainly, my main thing is air. I run everything air. All of my computers are air except for the 32-bit monster. That one's water cooled, and I did that for a complete and utter reason. But I want to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about this shit. That doesn't make no sense because I've already talked about that. So, anyway, let's talk about an air cooler because that's what I prefer air. Stuff about CPU coolers, especially when I'm selling them, you know. The, the first thing that comes out of my mouth is like, what do you plan on doing with the computer? Where is it going to be at? What room? Is it going to be on the floor? Are you going to have it on your desk? Think of it this way. Hot air rises, cool air falls. That's just the way it is, right? The cold air is at the bottom and the hot air is at the top. I don't recommend putting your computer on the floor because it will literally suck in everything that you have on your floor. When you walk, your feet kick up hair and dirt and everything else, and if your machine is running, it will just suck it right in. And that's not good, you really don't want that. So I tell other people, you know, put it on your desk. You can use dust filters. Those really help to bring clean air in. Second thing I wanna go over is what are you going to do with it? Are you going to run an i5? Are you going to run a Ryzen 5? Are you going to have, you know, just minimalistics? Or are you going to go crazy with it? A lot of those questions have to be asked. And you have to ask yourself, you know, do I really need to spend $100 on a CPU cooler? 
Not really, because you can still buy a $50 to $40 to $30 CPU cooler and still get the same results. Unless you might be going into, um, you know, like AIO. But the thing with AIOs is that, you know, a 240mm rad will only dissipate so much heat. A 360 or, you know, three radiators, three fans, that will dissipate more heat. But then you got to make sure that you have the room for them. And these things are expensive. And like I said, if the pump fails, you're in trouble. You might as well throw it away. If your fan fails on your CPU cooler, then you just replace the fan. Problem solved. I mean, that right there in itself is a great selling feature. IOs, they seem to be... Um, tend to be a little bit more pricier and I think that's because you're paying for the patent and the design and you know the whole brand and labeling and all that stuff that's basically what you're paying for and when it comes to pros and cons of weighing a CPU cooler versus a water cooler I just I don't see I just don't see the pros outweighing the cons I, I find more cons than I do pros Basically, with AIOs, they look cool. You know, that's basically about it. They look cool, but I don't like the box look sitting on your CPU and then having the two tubes run out of, of a box. Even if you put RGB and lights on it, it just, I don't know, there's just something to it that I don't quite like. And with all of the IOs, even the ones, the nicer ones with the OLED, the screens in them and stuff, uh, you know they they gotta they gotta be kind of unique for me to, to really like them but even then all you're buying is eye candy you're not really gaining much performance and also like I said if the pump fails on it you're done because you can't fix these these are sealed units they're proprietary they're fitted together pressure fitted together and there's nothing you can do with them so once they break they throw them away with CPU coolers, you don't have that problem. The fan breaks, you replace the fan. That's it. You know, and there's no bells or warning whistles that will go off with that. You'll just physically see it. You know, with AIOs, you don't know that until your system cooks. So anyway, if you look at what the fan flow is, the CFM, okay, that is how much flow rate of fan of air is being pushed through the radiator alright because when you when you're dealing with an air cooler it has to draw that heat up through the pipes and then the fan has to blow cool air on the fins to dissipate the heat with an AIO the water takes the heat transports it to the radiator or once again it gets dissipated over aluminum fins and where a, what? a fan has to blow air on it to keep it cool. Now with both my IOO, my AIO, AABIEO, with this CPU cooler and this CPU cooler, they're both rated at the same CFM rating. They're both rated at the same dissipation level meaning that they both dissipate heat at the same rate of speed now you can increase the rpms of the fan to give you more cooling but if the air that the fan is sucking in is ambient or 75 degrees you know whatever your house is it's it's not going to make too much of a difference which is kind of comes into the place of well if I get an I an AIO, then I gotta, you know, then I gotta figure out where do I put the radiator? Do I put it at the top? Do I put it at the front of the case? You know, um, is it gonna get good airflow? Sometimes in certain cases, you can only put these one way. Now, once again, with these you have to deal with height requirements, you know. How high does the CPU cooler stand up off the motherboard? Because you know when you when it stands up like this way and you turn the case back the right way, now your CPU cooler is sitting in there like this. And when you go to put the panel on, the side panel to the case, you'll hit it. And you'll have to, you know, you'll have to check the clearance height on that. 
and there is no grinding the pipe down or doing nothing like that, you cannot modify these in any way. If you modify them, you can destroy the pipes, you can destroy the, the filament that's inside of the pipes that dissipates and runs the heat. Um, you know, it just, modifications aren't the best way to go and I don't recommend that. So, anyway, those were kind of some tips and my tips about air versus water and CPU coolers and what to buy and what not to buy. Um, you know, I have a lot of cheap CPU coolers. I get a lot of fun out of them. But once I get them to a certain point, you know, um, to a certain CPU, then they're worthless. I can't use cheap ones no more. I would have to go to something a little bit nicer. Something with the TDP rating. That's another damn good tip. I'm glad I just thought of that. TV, TDP. Total points deducted is what it means. No, I'm just playing, guys. Oh, I'm just playing. Anyway, your TJ Maxx or your TDP is how much heat that the CPU cooler will dissipate from it. So if your CPU is rated for 65 watts or 110 watts or whatever it is, you want to check what the rating is for your CPU cooler. Now this one right here has a TDP of 210 watts. That means that it will handle any CPU that is less than 210 watts or at 210. So your 65 watt or your 45 watt CPU, this would be overkill for that because it could handle a higher threshold of heat. So something like this that has a TDP of 100, this would probably be something more along your lines or a TDP of 65, something like that. You want to make sure that you're, that you're keeping your checks and balances when you're looking at these kinds of things. And if you have any questions, guys, I don't mind. Leave a comment. Message me. I, leave, I post my phone number and my email address all over the place. I've had several fans or subscribers message me or text me on my phone. Hey, is this ATEC PCs? Yeah, that's me. What's up? What's going on? Um... And I try to bring vital information. I try to bring all the in-between things. You know, if you watch Linus and if you watch Jay and you watch some of them other guys, they leave out a lot of the little ticks, a lot of the little things that you need to know and able to get it to run smoothly and successfully. And those are the things that I'm going to try to cover. Those are the things that I do try to cover. But, you know... CPU coolers, definitely at best. Air versus water, I would go with air hands down every time because air is more sustainable for almost any environment that you bring it into. Water the same way, but at the same time with water, you know, you have to deal with the pump. That's another thing. When the pump starts whining, like when you plug it in and you hear that that's a telltale sign that your pump is fixing to fail on you and go kapoop. No more fan, no more pump. Your fans will still spin, but the pump won't work. And what will happen is, is eventually your computer will crash. I think that's like the third time I've mentioned that. I don't know. So anyway guys, that was my idea. This is the story. This is what we're doing. Bucka, bucka, bucka. Hope y'all liked it. Tech PCs in the house. Thanks so much for watching. You guys be cool, and as always, peace, peace, subscribe, hit the like, drop me a comment, love, y'all be cool, and as always, talk to y'all next time, I'm out, peace, it's your boy, it's your boy, it's your boy, it's your boy.